All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who does not sleep and it does not befit his majesty that he sleeps. He raises the scales and lowers them. The deeds of the day ascend to him before the deeds of the night. And the deeds of the night ascend to him before the deeds of the day. His veil is light. If he were to remove that veil, the light that comes from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will burn all of his creation. Glory to him. His knowledge is so vast. He knows everything that is, everything that isn't, everything that was, will never be. And peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his companions, those who reflect the guidance of his teaching sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We will certainly test you with a touch of fear and famine and loss of property life and crops, but give good news to those who patiently endure. Those when faced with a disaster, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Ula'ika alayhim salawatu min rabbihim wa rahmah. Those are the ones who receive the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. And those who are Truly guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you please move forward? Brothers and sisters, there is no one on the face of this earth who is not tested. There is no one on the face of this earth who does not go through trials. Tribulations, hard times, is common to everybody. No one can run away from trials. No one can hide from tribulations. No one can skip the hard times that we face in life. Sometimes some people, they get, they get it harder than others. In some cases, some people are more tried than others. And also the severity of the test. Some people are tested more severely than others. And that is all for a reason. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who knows the wisdom and the reason behind all of that. A man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, Ya Rasulullah, man ashaddu nasi bala'a. O Prophet of Allah, who is the most tested among people? Who is the most tested among people? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Anbiya Al Mursaleen. The most tested among people are the prophets and the messengers. Those are the most tested among people. Why? Because they have stronger faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the rest of us. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the next best, and then the next best. يُبْتَلَ الرَّجُلُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ دِينِهِ That the person will be afflicted according to the level of his or her faith. The strong the faith, the strong the calamity. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give you something that you cannot handle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, 
never promised us carefree as a daily companion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, however, that He will not let us down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went through a lot of persecution. He went a lot. He went through a lot of problems. He fought. He got injured. People insulted him. His dignity and honor were put into questions. He went through all of that. When one of the Sahaba in the early days of Islam, he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, Allah tastansiru lana, O Prophet of Allah, for how long we're going to go through this? For how long we're going to be in that persecution? For how long we're going to face all these trials and all these tribulations? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi innahu kana min qablikum. There were people before you who went through more than you went through, but they were more patient. He understood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that success and trials are strongly connected to one another. He understood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that really nothing great was ever achieved without calamities, without adversities. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was patient because he was not really ready to do anything else other than build a community, work on the faith of the community, and also be patient in a process. Brothers and sisters, understanding the wisdom of trials is probably the best way to know how to deal with grief. And there are so many benefits and wisdom behind our trials that you and I and the Muslim all over the world are going through. And the ummah right now is bleeding everywhere. People who died in earthquakes, what's happening in Gaza and Palestine, you know, every, in every corner of this globe, Muslims are going through trials and tribulations. And these trials and tribulations, again, they have wisdom, they have benefits. And we need to reflect on these wisdoms and these benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many Books were written about the wisdom of trials. But one of the most important wisdom, brothers and sisters, when we go through trials, when we watch all these images that come in from overseas, from Gaza, the one thing, the one wisdom, the one benefit really is connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when we go through trials, brothers and sisters, these trials help us to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These trials help us to renew our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when life is good, when everything goes well, we forget. We get distracted in this life. But when something happened in Gaza, look at the masajid now. Every night there is a qiyam. Every, every Monday and Thursday, people are fasting now in solidarity with what's happening in Gaza so that they can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they are fasting. So people are reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi and probably you and I and everybody in this room went through something in their life. And usually when we go through trials, the first thing that comes to mind, I can handle it. I will find a solution, but then we can't. And what you do, you look around for those who can help you. And you start asking right and left, can you help me with this? And people will tell you, Wallahi, if I could, I would. Who do you turn to after that? You turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of a sudden you wake up in the night, in the middle of the night, and you put your head down in sujood. And you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you tell him, Ya Allah, help me. And you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you complain to him. And you plead to him. Wallahi, those are the most beautiful moments in your life. Wallahi, those are the most beautiful moments in your life. Those hot tears. 
this begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the most beautiful times of your life. Because in that bitterness, you found the sweetness of the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When everybody was away from you, when everybody cannot help, you found the sweetness of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uqsim billah, it was told to me by people who went through a lot of trials, people who did not prostrate a single sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And out of his love, out of his mercy, he brought them back to him unwillingly through testing, through trials. Wallahi, they used to say, Ya Rabbi, why didn't you try me a long time ago? Wallahi, I know somebody who had a heart attack and they told him that you're going to die. And he went into the surgery room and he was there by himself and he said, Ya Rabbi, they say that you exist. They say that you're, com you're, you're merciful. I can't meet you like this. I did not do anything in my life. I didn't pray my whole life. Give me a chance. Give me another chance. You will not be disappointed. Wallahi, two years later, he his life completely changed. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him safety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him another chance. He came out of the hospital and he was a completely different person. Two years after the, hospital, after the surgery, he used to say, why didn't she give me that heart attack a long time ago? You know, can you please move forward? There are people standing outside. So brothers and sisters, challenges are meant. They meant to bring out the best potential inside of us. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, the calamity that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a calamity. The hard times that brings you closer to Allah, pay attention. The hard times that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a calamity, is not a trial. It's a blessing in disguise. Because what is greater than being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm telling you, the masajid, masha'Allah, every night people ask me, can we do qiyam? Can we do dua for the people in Gaza? Wallahi, I had a young man a few days ago who approached me and he said, you know, I've been smoking marijuana for the last couple of years. And so many people spoke to me to quit. And I've heard so many lectures about it. But I did not really have the, term, the determination to quit. But I promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will quit now. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment asked me, what did you do for the people of Gaza? I would say, Ya Allah, I tried to fix my situation. Ya Allah, I decided to fix my own estate so that you can help me or you can help the whole world and you help the state of the Muslims. I said, Wallahi, that's profound. This is actually what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. That Allah will not change the state of people unless they change themselves. Allah will not change the state around us unless we start first to work on ourselves. People when they talk about Gaza, they talk about the Crusades and Salahuddin. They talk about you know, the Mongols and the Qutuls and, and all the victorious leaders throughout the history of Islam. Usually the narrative was there's the Crusades and all of a sudden Salah al-Din appeared. That's, that's not what happened. Between the first Crusaders who landed in the Holy Land until Salah al-Din, there were half a century, half a century, where Muslims were paying jizya. Muslims were paying taxes. They were divided, they were nothing, they were insignificant. They were humiliated. And only when they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imaduddin Zanki showed up. And after him, his son Nuruddin, who paved the way to Salahuddin. Salahuddin used to go around at night 
to check on his soldiers, people who fought all night long or day long. He will go into their tents and he will find them standing up praying. Qiyamul Layl. He used to say, nantasir. This is how I granted victory. We have so many problems. And wallahi, wallahi, I will tell you this from the bottom of my heart. If you are a violent person, if you're violent at home, if you're terrorizing your wives and your children, so you have no right to complain about the violence in Gaza. Wallahi, you have no right to complain about the violence of Gaza. You can look at it and say, you know what? It's a terrible society out there. It's a violent society out there. But so is my house. So everything starts from within, brothers and sisters. So these trials, what's happening in Gaza, it's a, it's a wake-up call. It's for all of us to turn back and say, where is the problem? Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, he was in the battlefield. He said, when you look at the situation of the Muslims, when you get angry, when you get angry at the situation of the Muslim, turn that anger into yourself. Turn it to yourself and ask yourself, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Aren't you fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you actually learning from the Qur'an? Are you implementing the teachings of the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is the matter with you? Why don't you get up and pray at night? Why don't you fast every Monday and Thursday? Why don't you quit the gossiping and he said and she said and be a prophetic community? That's when we are granted victory. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You're hasty. You're hasty. Fathi Makkah didn't just happen. Fathi Makkah took 20 years. He was in the kitchen ﷺ, cooking and preparing and, and raising strong generations of Muslims. And when Allah gave him the upper hand, he entered Makkah. And one of his leaders, one of his commanders, he said, اليوم يوم الملحمة. Today is the day of a slaughter. Today is the day of revenge. He turned to him humbly, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, La wallah. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of forgiveness. So trials, brothers and sisters, they reconnect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They help us to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trials, brothers and sisters, also are a part of our destiny. And they help us achieve our destiny. The situation is terrible. Small little place, you cannot even see it on the map. Again, it's, a, a ma again, it's the entire world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about this in the Quran as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us a story that took place in the same place in Gaza. And that is Dawood alayhi salam and the Goliath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the story of Dawood and Jalut in the Quran. A small group of people, 300, 300 people. Al-Bara'u ibn Azib, he said, the number of the people of Jalut on that day were the same amount of people who fought with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Badr, 313. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted victory to Dawood, to Jalut. Dawood was a soldier, a young man, a shepherd boy. But subhanallah, brothers and sisters, Imagine if there was no Jalut. Imagine if there was no Jalut. Dawood would only be known as the shepherd boy. Jalut was placed in Dawood's path. He was ordained for Dawood to place him on the throne. What I'm trying to say here, brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes can use your enemy not to defeat you, but to promote you. 
All the people who hate you, all the people who the, 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 they say bad things about you, the gossip and all of that, all the people who try to push you down, Allah can use those people to push you up, to put you in the throne. So never lose the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةٍ كَثِيرَةٍ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ There will be so many Goliath ordained to come across our path. And if we don't understand this principle, we will get dis discouraged and think, why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing something? Allah is doing something. It is all a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get you and get those people to where they're supposed to be on the throne. Brothers and sisters, never think that ibtila is a disgrace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never think that trials are a form of humiliation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasha lillah. Yaqulu sahibu. Sahib al-Dhilal, rahimahullah, he said, Hasha lillah, an yu'adhab al-mu'minina bil-ibitla, wan yu'udhihim allahu bil-fitna, walakinnahu al-i'adadu al-haqiqi li-tahammul al-amana, fahiyya fi hajatin ila i'adad khas, la yatummu illa bil-mu'ana, wa illa bil-sabri ala al-alam, wa illa bil-thiqa fi nasri Allah, he said, Rahimahullah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give believer challenges as punishment. Glory to Him. And instead, these challenges help them get ready to uphold trust. This readiness comes from enduring tough times, showing patience during suffering, and having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's support, no matter how long or tough the challenge is. As for our brothers and sisters who passed away, those who were, whose life were taken unjustly, and subhanAllah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he stood up, because there was a, a funeral passing by, a funeral of a Jewish person were passing by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of respect for the human soul, he stood up. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, it is a janazah of a Jewish man. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَوَلَيْسَتْ نَفْسَ Isn't it a soul? Those people who died, the children, the children who, who were killed while they were sleeping, are they not souls? I was watching, unfortunately, I was watching the, the, the news when the images from that hospital came. And um, it's unfortunate because there was no filter. So I saw it as it was coming. I saw pieces of children. And people, so many people, their bodies are disfigured. And my wife was a convert, she said, Nobody knows them. How will people identify them? And immediately I remembered Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. When he sent a Muslim army to Persia to fight. They said that Umar will pray Fajr every day and then he will go out on the highway waiting for some news from Persia. And he will wait until noon and then he will come back and he will do that every single day. One time he saw a soldier who, a soldier who came with the news. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Abshir. I have good news. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted victory to the Muslims and he honored the believers. Qala abathak al Nu'man. Did Nu'man send you? Nu'man, who was the commander of the army, he said, No, Abu Ubaidah did. And Nu'man, ya Amir al -Mu'minin. He died as a shaheed. 
Who else died? قَالَ فُلَان وَفُلَان وَفُلَان He said, so and so, and so and so, and so and so. He said, وَأُنَاسٌ كَثِيرُونَ لا يعلمهم أمير المؤمنين. And much more who died that Amir al-Mu'mineen does not know them. And much more than the 5,000 people who died in Gaza, they're still under the rubble. We don't know anything about them. We don't know their names. فَقَالَ عُمَرْ وَمَا يَضُرُّهُمْ إِذَا لَمْ يَعْرِفُهُمْ عُمَرْ They said that Umar started to weep and he said, Why would it matter to them if Umar knows them? It is enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them. Those people were chosen by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء And he selects from among yourselves, he selects the shuhada. You and I wish to die as shuhada. But that's a privilege that is given only to chosen people. And that's what Allah says in the Quran. وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept him as shuhada. My last point, brothers and sisters, is make dua. Make dua. Your dua is the most powerful tool that you have right now. Make dua. Make dua for the oppressed. Make dua for our brothers and sisters over in Gaza, overseas in Gaza. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will safeguard the children. Allahi, a few days ago, again, I tell people do not watch images, do not watch the news. But I find it important that you and I watch these things. Because they bring life to your heart. Just in case, if the heart was somewhere else, it would br- they bring life to the heart. There's a man standing in a hospital carrying a baby on his shoulder, just like this brother right there, and the child is sleeping, two or three years old. Bandage and he is wounded. And the person he's taking the video is asking him, Why are you carrying him? He said, Where do you want me to put him? What do I do with him? He said, Where's his parents? He said, Well, they didn't make it. I felt so jealous that I wanted to be that man, Wallahi. But the question is, what would the world say to this boy when he grow older? Oh, you lived. You were supposed to die. But here you are. And what type of a person he will grow up to be? So pray, brothers and sisters. Pray. If they give you hard times at work, your co-workers, your company that you work with, the people in the street. Pray, make dua. Make dua. If you feel disappointed from the politicians that you probably voted for, make dua. If you look at the situation in Gaza and you feel like you're hopeless, make dua. And know, when nasru min indillah. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ That victory only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor Islam and Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the lives of Muslims. 